What's up everybody? I'm back in Los Angeles after a six week stint in Las Vegas. Basically played tournaments for six weeks, which can be an extremely frustrating experience. Probably played about 40 hours of cash games. The games just aren't very good in Vegas in terms of cash. In terms of tournaments, obviously it is about as good of a time that you're gonna find to play live tournaments. And while I am a cash game specialist and someone who pri primarily only plays cash games, I do fire tournaments in Vegas during the World Series of Poker. This summer, I fired significantly more than I normally would. So I played 18 total bullets in Vegas, cashed three of those. So I lost pretty badly. Uh, the majority of those were $1,500 in down buy-ins, but I also did play the $10,000 main event where I bagged up 16 big blinds heading from day two to day three. Not the best showing. And then I battled it out for about 70 minutes or so on day three before getting all in with ace king off versus two nines for a potential triple up. Nines, that's good, that's fine too. Now we, now we can fight for it. Okay. Ace King. That's not good. <laughs> That's it. Okay. 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 I could not win the flip. A tough, long trip. Uh, but the result, the majority of the time when you play live tournaments, is going to be that you don't win. They're really high variance, and unless you make a deep run, you're just not going to really turn a profit. Outside of that, when I wasn't playing tournaments, I was having dinner with my producer, Jamie. Two spots I wanna highlight. My favorite spot was Tan Tan Katsuya. Amazing. The other place is we went to a meme restaurant. David Williams said it was the best burger in Las Vegas. He's a famous poker player and also a chef. So we decided to go check out just the burger at Salt Bay. We didn't wanna do $1,500 steaks, but we did go try the burger. Insanely ridiculous place. I don't even know what to say about it. I, I feel like I'm a little too old for this meme shit, but uh, apparently it's a thing. So that's it. Uh, Vegas was rough, got beat up pretty bad. Gonna try to recover in these cash games out here in LA. Heading up to the bike later today to get in a session. In this first hand, we've got King Queen offsuit facing a low jack limp. We raised to $85. Low jack does call. I don't have a lot of reads on the low jack, but my guess is that he's a relatively weak player. Flops jack 6 2, two hearts. Low jack checks. And we go with a C bet of $70. And the low jack calls this small size pretty quickly. So now we're looking for a good turn card. And that's exactly what we get when the ace of clubs drops. Low jack checks. So now we've got a gut shot straight draw. And also this ace is just generally very good for our range. So I try to blow his face off. 400 into 345, a pretty sizable overbet. Trying to put pressure on basically his entire range here. And I do have a lot of intent to go crazy on many good rivers. But it doesn't come to that. The low jack folds. Poker's really fun when you got your overbets working like this. Button's open to 60 and you love to see it. We pick up pocket aces in the straddle. So we've got an easy three bet and raise it to $270. Button's all in for $14.95. I got the best hand. He reveals ace jack offsuit. So it's hard to be in much better shape than this. What a disgusting river. Totally want to puke on this one. You see me channel a little rare anger at the table. I kind of toss the cards out of frustration. Channeling that inner Daniel Negreanu selfie stick breaking vibe. Not too proud of this, and it is very rare for me, but a little bit of anger comes out. Steaming a little bit from that ace's hand, we pick up Live King's absolute favorite hand in the small blind, ace king offsuit. There's a middle position limp, and we raise it up to $130. Big blind gets out of the way, and now the action's on the straddle. He calls. And Straddle and I have a little bit of history. He's a young, sticky pro, pretty tough. We've tangled a little bit, but not a lot has been shown between us. So we go heads up to the flop here, and it comes ace, 10, 10, two spades. So pretty good flop for ace king. We go ahead and bet $85. Straddle's taking his time a little bit here. He cuts out a raise of $250. So with the action back on us, I think this hand is obviously strong enough to continue, 
but when we look at his range, he's got plenty of 10s in range, Jack-10, Queen-10, King-10, 10-9, 10-8, all those combos, he could have suited an offsuit of a lot of those, but our hand's just a little too good, we got a call. He's got some bluffs in range too, plenty of spade draws. Turns a jack of spades, so the flush does come in. I continue to check and flow. Straddle quickly checks back. Rivers a deuce of spades, so four spades come now, and our hand is shriveled up to essentially nothing. Red ace king, all we've got is top pair. I don't think there's a ton we really beat at this point. But I do decide to check. And now the straddle bets $375. This is a value bet, just a touch under half pot. We don't really beat a whole lot here. The question is, is what does his line really mean? Would he have checked a hand like a turn flush? King, queen of spades would be a royal flush. I don't know if he'd trap that or not. Jack 10, I don't think he'd trap. If he flopped ace 10, I think he would have kept on betting. So sure, he can have some flushes. He can have some trips that do beat us. But I think ultimately here, we've got a pretty good range advantage when we get to the river this way. I've got ace 10 and pocket aces myself. So with this red ace king, all in. I go for the monster all in bluff, 2250 all in. In a quick fold from the straddle. We're jacks folded. Yeah, the ace is full. That's what I thought too. If he loses, he's going to lose for the jack. Maybe not, maybe maybe got a big box. There is no maybe. He goes all in, he got a full house. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Today, when you drive home with your car, think about this hand. Maybe, maybe. He got a full house, that's it. This next one is played versus an electric personality, one of my favorite people to play against in LA. We've got queen nine of spades in the button, and our buddy opens it up to 60 in the cutoff. I raise it up to 210. In this spot, I'm doing this to create a dynamic, and I also think this player thinks I'm overly tight. So sometimes we're gonna show him that we have range ourselves. And he does put in the call. Flops, queen five four, rainbow. Checks it over. And this time I check it back. Deuce of diamonds turn. He checks it and I go ahead and check it back quickly once again. Now the jack of spades on the river. He quickly fires out 200. We've got the easy call and he shows king nine offsuit. So the double check works, gets him to bluff river. We pick up a nice small one. We've got the offsuit big chick here in the low jack. We make it $60 to go. Small blind calls, he's a huge spot. He's literally playing 90% of the hands. And I don't know how much he's down to this point, but it's probably about $8,000. I have not been the recipient of this money. I've been watching it go to other people. Action's on the big blind. He's a shot taking 5-5 pro, and I know this for a fact. He raises it to 275. Action folds back to us, and in this exact dynamic, I'm trying to decide if the big blind would ever be trying to isolate the small blind light here. If he can get me out of the way and play heads up against the small blind, it's a great spot for him. I also do know that he's a shot taker, so I have the option to apply a little bit of pressure to him. I maybe get a little bit too caught up in this whole aspect here. Call seems okay, raising seems okay sometimes. We start the hand nearly 4,000 effective. So I raise it up to $800. This is a bluff. Small line folds. Now the action's back on the big blind. So I'm applying max pressure here, saying I have an amazing hand. I'm really making him come up with something if he wants to continue. Long, long tank from the big blind here. So I'm really hoping that he folds. But he doesn't, he puts in the call. Flop 6642 spades. So we don't really have any backdoor equity. Big blind checks. Now I'm a little disappointed that I put in this four bet bluff. Maybe a bad read by me. A little too much live intuition. And I don't want to make any more blunders. So rather than betting, I just decide to check and shut it down. Five of clubs on the turn. We still have absolutely nothing. I'm basically in shutdown mode at this point. I'm just seeding this to the shot taker. The shot taker bet's really small. I just quickly fold. Just don't want to do anything more in this hand. We've got king nine hearts and hijack. 
Raise it to 60. Button calls. Small blind calls. He's the maniac action guy who stuck heaps. And we're going to go three ways. Flops king, queen, three, rainbow. So we've got top pair, mediocre kicker, and a couple of back doors. Small blind checks it to us, and this time I do check, and so does the button. It's the monkey in the middle strategy I've talked about in past videos sometimes, where I check when I'm the player in the middle. Turns a five of hearts, so we've got a four flush now. Small blind leads 125. I don't think this hand's really quite good enough to raise, even versus this player. It is a three-way pot, so I go ahead and call. But the button calls too. River's a deuce of hearts, so now we're home. We got the king high flush. The small blind checks, that's disappointing. This guy's just been firing all over the place. So now I just have to decide what size might the button or the small blind call. Button can definitely have a lot of flushes in range when he checks flop and calls turn. I bet 350. Quick fold from the button. 350. Okay. Relatively quick call from the small blind. <laughs> Small blind's a little confused here. Ask what I have. He had shown 5-3 offsuit. So he had two pair on the turn. So I was ahead on the flop. He sucked out on turn. I resuck river. This game is absolutely wide open today. Chips flying everywhere. You've got two tens under the gun and shoot it up to $75. Cutoff calls. Button calls. Big blind's gonna call. We're gonna go four ways. We get an 8742 diamond flop, checks to us. We decide to check this time. So does the cutoff, and the button's gonna bet 200. Fold by the big blind. And once we check these two tens, I don't love this board, but the hand's too good, so I call. Cutoff's gonna get out of the way. I'm gonna go heads up with the button to a turn, which is a black nine giving us an open-ended straight draw. I check and flow once again to the button, hoping to not get too much heat. She checks back. River's a six of diamonds. So flush is home, so is the straight. Our hand does pretty well here, and when she checks the turn, she could have a variety of flush draws. Maybe she's got some 8x. I bet 200. It's a block bet for value. I think she would continue a lot of her diamond draws on the turn. I'm discounting that a little bit. And she goes into a massive tank here. She typically sits relatively short. It might be the pure amount, $200. She buys in for the minimum of a thousand usually, so she might not want to put in a lot of money, but she doesn't really seem scared. Very, very, very long tank from her on this river. She eventually does call and gets the bad news that we've got the 10 eyes straight. She can't beat it, so we win a small one, and I think we sucked out on the river given that she was able to call it all. It's been a really wild game all throughout the day. And we're shorthanded now. We've got four three of spades in the button, which would typically be a fold, but this game's soft, so I open it up. Big blind calls. So does the straddle. Straddle has been winning and losing huge pots. He's a complete tornado. Incredible flop for us. Ace nine five two spades. Big blind checks. So we've got a gut shot straight flush draw here. That was on me? Yeah. Straddle pretends to maybe not know it's on him, and now he shoots out an overbet of 200. We go ahead and call. I think here, calling is standard. If there ever was a time to raise, it would probably be with a four high gut shot straight flush draw. Just a really weird line from the straddle here. We're gonna go heads up to this turn. It's a king of diamonds. It's actually a really good card for us. Straddle keeps on firing. $300 into 585 now. In game, I was really confused. I considered raising right now, so I thought about raising flop, didn't do it. Now he seems maybe a little weaker on the turn, but he's got a lot of ace in range and he doesn't give up very easily. He's not scared to play big pots at all. So I take a price, call once again. Hoping to hit a really good river here, and it doesn't happen. Jack of diamonds. Now he quickly checks. So we've got four high. This is not a guy that I want to be bluffing really hardly ever. He just doesn't have much of a fold button. But again, we've got four high. If there was ever a time to bluff this guy, it's gotta be now. We shoot out a thousand. 
and he does fold really quickly. So maybe he had a bigger spade draw or a middle pair type hand, completely unclear. Okay guys, end of the session. Long one, 10 hours, played a lot of interesting ones today. You know, sometimes it gets tiring being uh, stoic. Got pocket aces in today as a 90% favorite, lost the hand. I've been a pro for about seven years now. This is unequivocally the worst year I've ever had. Now people are getting better. Maybe I'm falling behind, it's hard to say. Poker's confusing, but it's been extremely frustrating. Some of that could be the traveling. It could be the players are better in LA. I spent an extended period of time in Miami where the player pool was extremely soft. Couldn't really win any money. Tonight there was a guy that lost $20,000 in the game. We'll get to the results at the end. Given that I was one of three pros in the game and a guy lost $20,000, I would hope that my results would be a little bit better than they were. These are the types of spots you really gotta capitalize on. Poker for me has been utterly and totally miserable on every level. And I'm not trying to bitch. I'm not trying to be like, like, a, like a Lexo poker. I'm sure some of you guys watch his vlog. He is a whiny, totally trash poker player. I mean, he's a fucking clown ass joke. I'm trying not to be one of those guys. I've been around a long time. I've seen a lot of shit. I think there's certainly some things I can be improving on, uh, like specifically how I played that ace queen hand today. You know, I don't love it, but I had a plan and then I decided to stay with the plan and not blunder any further. You see things in these vlogs and I know you guys all watch other poker vloggers. A lot of it is, I, I don't know. I don't know if they do this for their job or who they are or what they are. And some of the guys are very good players, but most of them are not very good players. And so, yeah, you see me winning in sessions, you see good things happening for me, but really at the end of the day, just cause I win $1,000 in a session or 1,500 in a session, you know, this is my job and I have a lot of losing days. I guess I've been mostly trying to hold myself stoic in these because I, I don't get overly angry, but uh, I know everybody loves to hear those deep, dark, secret thoughts. You know, the shit that's really in people's minds. What's this like when it's not going your way? That's really it. Final numbers, in for 3,000, out for 3,880. That is a profit of 880, but like I said, a guy did lose $20,000 in the game today, and when you win 880 in that game, it's not a good day as a pro.